welcome to another episode of the Truths We Hide podcast. I am so excited because today I have a high school friend that I've known for, oh gosh, like 30 years and I have her husband on here. So a duo power couple that has been through some shit, that has turned a negative, several negative, negative experiences into positive. And I can't wait for you to the story of Cynthia and Sean Emerson. They are professionally positive people and I just want to hug them through the screen. But thank you, thank you, thank you, Sean and Cynthia for being on here. I want you to, you have so much to tell and I'm so excited to have real people on here. Not that everybody's not real, but we have some people that I've known for several, several years and who doesn't always put their story out on social media, but behind the scenes, they are, they have struggled and they have learned how to turn it around and even come up with, or, you know, make a, a family wine business. So, so excited for you guys to share that. So thank you for being on here. I'm really excited and honored. Thanks for having us. We're honored. Thank you for inviting us to your podcast. Absolutely. I, I really, you know, I'm really lucky to have, to know people like you who have been through the storm, but have come out saying, no, we're going to be warriors. We're going to survive this. And this is how we've done it. So can you talk to us about first off the Tubbs Southern California fire from October, 2007, you lost your house and you lost everything. How did you even, what did you do at that moment? And tell them, tell us how your mindset just completely shifted from having one thing at one time and then having nothing at another. Okay. Well, that was a very unexpected night. Um, for, um, For being from Southern California, I'm used to the Santa Ana winds, but it doesn't exist in Northern California. We have pretty cool nights. And just that night, we noticed that there was a shift in the weather and we were at the park. It was eerily warm. It was very weird. It was warm. And so it was around 8.30. We come home that night and we, we, you know, we just go to bed. We left the windows open, but still for me, it's a normal, but it was a little strange that we have that kind of weather here in Northern California. And it was around the one o'clock morning where we wake up and our room was full of smoke and then that's when no, it, it, maybe it was 11 30 at night sister, your, your cousin came. and so it was just uh, nobody knew there was no sirens no fire um, alarms went off um, no advance notices we don't have radios anymore so we couldn't tune into the radio tv no nothing was on so nobody knew really what was happening So we were woken up by her cousin saying, do you see all the smoke? And we, the room was full of smoke and we had no idea. So I start calling my mom to see if uh, she's available and she wasn't picking up and that wasn't normal. So I left temporarily and um, went to check on my mom, which is about a mile away. And luckily the fire was in the opposite direction. So by the time I get back, you can now see a orange sky and cars streaming out of our uh, community neighborhood. neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So we packed everything up and Cynthia wanted to close all the windows and I didn't really feel there was enough time. I was saying, forget about the windows. We need to get out of here. There's a traffic jam outside. I made the mistake of trying to drive into what is known as coffee park where the, 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 the majority of the homes that were lost and where our, our other house was. <clears throat> and to be perfectly honest and clear about that is we lost a house that had all of our stuff in it. And we just recently moved to a different house. So even though we weren't necessarily living there, we lost wedding dresses, photos, yearbooks, everything, in furniture, it, furniture, everything, everything uh, in the other house that some friends were renting from us. So not that we were living there, but we were, half a mile from where it burnt down our other house. So our, our other house was in peril too. Needless to say, 
um, Cynthia's like, oh, let me close all the windows. I'm like, there's no time to close windows. And she's acting lackadaisical. I was the one driving in the streets and tried to drive into Coffee Park and almost got stuck and had to get back to the house and get them. And I said, we're going to go to my friend's house, Gerald. And we, you know, we went to my mom's house first, right? To just check on everybody. And it was a crazy crazy I, didn't, I don't think we you slept a little bit yeah nobody slept that night we were all in danger of losing like, our yeah. houses um my littlest one our littlest one was about a year and a month old or, or so maybe a year and four months old um, we ran out of the house as fast as we could the fires should really have hit our home as like we're our new home where we live now we're only about six blocks from where the fire ended so it was a matter of the wind shifting. And I brought up the weather from Southern California because as you know, Santa Ana winds, they can just shift anywhere, anytime. Mm -hmm. And so everybody out of the, everybody was evacuated. Um, we didn't know where we were going. The streets were full of people. And then just to wake up in the morning um, to see just a disaster, just everything had burned to the ground. Um, I don't even remember how how high was the fire, the temperature just burned through metal, through every possible thing. I mean, by six o'clock in the morning, I, I drove to the edge of the fire where there's a railroad track that, that was kind of like the, the stopped the majority of it. There's some fire homes that caught fire on the other side closer to our other house. But at six in the morning, I actually went to the edge and you could feel the heat. By 7, 7.30, I drove in, and it, when the essay, it looks like a bomb going off. I mean, for, for never being in war, I felt like I had been to a war zone. I mean, yeah. cars, our neighbor's Corvette, there was nothing less left, so it was hot enough to melt an aluminum frame into a puddle of aluminum. Um, our granite countertops, I would touch them, and they would crumble like sandstone. So the, the intensity of the heat, um and the i think it, at one point they even described a uh, a fire tornado kind of ripped through there because of all the heat and the wind there was some garage doors up in about 40 50 feet in the air in redwood trees that were burnt to a crisp so for the amount of wind or explosions and while we were leaving and right before we left, we were hearing boom, 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 boom. It was all the propane tanks from all the uh, barbecues. So without ever being in war, it certainly felt like we went through it. And I mean, that's without people being shooting at us. So it was a, a pretty intense experience. Oh my God, I, I can't even imagine. And I'm just so thankful that you guys weren't in the house at the time and you were able to get out of that. So I, I got to share something with you. One of our Nate, one of our roommates, his name was Chris. He was our mad scientist, crazy smart guy. I call him on the phone while I'm driving back to go pick up Cynthia and the family, I'm trying to get into Coffee Park. I call him, hey Chris, how's everything going? He's like, oh, everything's fine, Sean. We're just, you know, this, you know, people are leaving and stuff. Well, come to find out, I spoke to him four days later. I go, why were you so calm? He's all, what was I going to do, Sean? I was actually pouring water on your roof at that time. And I waited to the end until I saw that the that bushes and trees were catching on fire around him at the time. And he says, well, sorry, Sean, I can't, I can't water your roof anymore. So he had to peace out at that point. So the, the amount of stories and anecdotal experiences from this thing is just it makes it so vivid and then you see the videos on youtube of people driving through fire I mean, there was a family no a, a disabled person that sheltered the sto firestorm in the middle of this park and everything around the park burned it was so hot the caretaker in the wheel it took the person in the wheelchair from one end of it to the other as the different areas got too hot and they suffered minor uh, smoke inhalation, but the amount of crazy stories that you've heard and what we went through, I mean, we didn't even have to escape a burning house. Well, we know many people who did. 
So and, that that's the crazy part. And that still is, we still live in that neighborhood. I mean, like I said, we're only about six blocks to the last house that got caught on fire. So all the community was um, lost and we didn't know what was happening. Although we saw the sky orange, we really didn't know how fast the fires were coming. Nobody did. Nobody. You well, I, just, yeah. I hear people hitchhiking on the road, just trying to get a ride. They left ev everything, cars. I mean, like, like, you, like, like Sean said, I mean, we lost 99% of our things. Luckily we had shelter just a few, blo few blocks away, but I mean, really we live minimally. Um, and we have some clothes. We had a bed and we had our cars and we had a computer. First world problem. So that's, yeah, we had something saved, but all the memories, all of our, like our true home, our first home, everything was starting from scratch. So how do you do that? How do you, how do you prepare yourself and try to keep positive to start over? Because I know, you know, a lot of us can't fathom losing everything. And even now I'm sitting here looking at my stuff and it's just stuff. And I keep yeah. thinking about it. Like what would happen if I lost it? Probably, I mean, this is just stuff. So how do you, how do you do that? How do you start over again? You get over it. You just do what you just said that you just do. You just look at your things and they're just stuff. Um, what is the most important thing to work on is, is your mindset regardless. I mean, that, that, that experience you can't prepare yourself for, right? So you have to have a strong person. You have to have a really strong partnership because you know, Sean went into gladiator mode. Like have you ever seen the movie gladiator, it's like, there's one guy who's the, who, who, who is the leader. And he's like, let's, let's fight, rebuild. Let's, um, let's be strong. And at some point I thought, I asked him, I'm like, you, you don't have these human emotions. <laughs> like you haven't cried. You haven't. I mean, it's, when he said it would look like a war zone, it, it really does. And if you ever look at newspapers and the aerial view of this catastrophe, you're going to compare it to a bomb. It was, it was disastrous. And so you, you just move on in that. You just like be grateful and you're happy. And then on top of that, I had a different role than Sean. Like I have, I, I had to take care of our little one. And like I said, he was only like a year and a few months. He doesn't know what happened. So I had to be happy. I had to be happy. I had to be happy. And so when I wanted to cry, he couldn't see, I didn't want him to see me cry because he was on a swing or he was outside or he was enjoying his food. So I had to, no matter what, 